This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. Today here, we've got a Yamaha golf cart, gas cart obviously, and uh, this one's been sitting a couple of years, not quite as bad as that cub kit or club car that I uh, did a while back. Um, might be able to just do a carb clean or something along the, those lines to get this one running uh, today. We might have to drain the gas out, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't look nearly as bad as that Cub Cadet. We'll get inside here. I'll show you what everything's uh, looking like up in here, and uh, we'll get started with the repair. And we think this is around a mid '90s model, like '95, '96, and. You got your whole setup right here obviously it like i said it's been sitting a while we've got corroded battery terminals things along those lines i've already taken the seat out taking the air filter and stuff out the air filter actually looks pretty clean on it the fuel lines are pretty hard we might have to replace might have to replace some and we got the choke set up here Similar to a red one that I did a while back, but I didn't film it. Looks like I've got two 10 millimeters back here to get off. Do I have any more to get off? Uh, on this side, I feel like I do somewhere. Uh, it may just be that hose right there, that breather hose. And then the carburetor should be exposed under here. When we open the fuel here, I just hate to sometimes break open a bunch of stuff because it's very cloudy. It smells like a little bit of varnish. We might be able to put a little bit of fresh gas in there to dilute it out, just give it a good run. So, I'll get these off. I'll disconnect this hose. Man, it feels like there's one more somewhere that's keeping this on. I'll let you know what it is when I get it off. So it appears it's those two bolts and then on the bottom is where the carb hooks up. I think it's 12 millimeters. Are they 12 or 13s? 12 millimeters on the bottom here. And those are the ones that hook into the carb. If there's any more, I'll let you know. So let's get into doing this now, taking the carb off. Looks like we've got to take off a bracket. Forgive me if my hands get in the way. There's two screws here. One of them's for a choke. One of them's for the throttle. Just the whole like throttle plate and everything here. I think we need to take that off. We do need to take off these clips though. And these. And that disconnects those. So what just needs to happen now is I just need to take this screw off here. And in theory, well, is there a second screw somewhere? Yes, oh, it's right there. Oh, darn. Man. So I need to get a stubby Phillips and get under here and undo that screw. Yeah, definitely a stubby. I'm gonna take that screw off and then we'll work on uh, getting this carburetor off next. So taking the screw off, taking the bracket off, and I 
tapped it a couple times with some pliers to get this carburetor off. Now, we might have a little fun seeing how bad it is in here. It is a bunch of yellow, yellow gas varnish type stuff. And that's not what you, that's not really what you want to see, but uh, we'll get it on the carb stand and see what we got. Let's see what we got going on here. So is this a Makuni 2? Eh, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure this one's never been broken open before. Gasket wants to stick. Ugh. So, that big deal. I think we can get it, tuck it back in there. Uh, it's really not bad in here at all. Might just have some bad gas or something along those lines. We'll brush that out a little bit. What else have we got going on here? Tried to just clean this space up a little bit before I broke everything open, so. Let's see what's going on. Hopefully we can get, let's see, so the needle and seat are working like they're supposed to. Need to get that need or that pin out there. We'll try the jets. Let's see. So I can feel it going into the needle and seat. Smells like water though. So I think we just need to revamp the fuel system, honestly. And in terms of getting it off, get these jets off. We'll just get the jets off, make sure they're nice and clean if they'll come off. So that jet appears to be good. Hopefully y'all can see through there. Set that aside. Let's see if we can get the jets on the inside here. Hopefully we can. Okay. Well, I think I'm just going to spray these jets out, put the, clean that bottom of the bowl out, put it back on. Everything looks good in here otherwise. Not, not bad at all. So. Just need some carb clean, I think. Oh, this is the whole shebang here. A little bit of crud in these, that emulsion tube right there, but nothing... Nothing ridiculous. So I'm going to carb spray this, clean this up a little bit before I put it back together. Clean this out on the bottom and uh, probably call it a day on this. Uh, tells me that I do need to take all the tank out and drain it and probably do the fuel system, fuel lines and things like that. Not a big deal. Hopefully I don't have to take the whole back fender off like I had on that club car to get this off. But one shall see. So gas-wise, I saw it pumping, but it is some nasty stuff. So what I'm going to do is take off these four screws for the fuel line. I will replace the fuel line from here to the fuel pump and from the fuel pump to the tank. Uh, probably replace this also, unless it's still clean. Uh, tank, from what I can see... has a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter tucked back there 
And I think those two items are really the only thing keeping this on. So let me get that off and see what else we can do after that. But uh, I think we should be able to slide it up through this little opening here as opposed to having to worry with the fender on this one, thankfully. Well, the good news is the tank does remove without the fender having to move. You have to kind of turn it sideways and lift it up on this side where it kind of indents back a little bit. I'll show you how to put it back in here in just a second. But I wanted to show you the inside of the tank after I drained it out. Pretty clean for what it is. So we don't have to do any drastic measures like that club car. We'll just slap it back in here. Um, and then I'm just going to work on getting these fuel lines replaced. And uh, next order of business will basically be just putting everything back on. Like I said, I'll show you how to put the gas tank back in. I'll need to vacuum that out a little bit right there. I'll show you how to put the gas tank back in. And we'll go from there when it comes to the carb and all that good stuff next. All right, guys, it's time for this gas tank to be put back in. There are a couple of spacer washers here, I believe, that go on the back side of it. So. Be vigilant when it comes to that. They might go on the front. Yeah, they might go that way. Like so. But either way, we're going to pop it back in. It does not go like this. It has to go down uh, this way, I believe. You know, you get it in, and you can't get it, or you get it out, but you can't get it back in, right? Let's see. That, is that the right way though? I don't know if that's the right way, let's see. <laughs> Usually they go out or they come out harder than they go back in oh i need to get the orientation right don't i something along these lines here this is actually embarrassing crazy thing is i got it in or i got it out and i can't get it back in there we go. Woo. Hope y'all enjoyed the struggle. Now, what we've got going on is this, uh, let's see what we've got. So this goes on the back side or on the front side of the bolt for the gas tank and then what we're going to do is we're going to find thread it back in the one word about these whenever you pull them out they will pop they will uh pop out pretty quickly and fly try and fly away on you if you're not careful so look out We'll get all this back in here. make sure that's right there. Eh. It's tight. We'll adjust it a little bit here.
Oh no, I got it in there. Okay. So, now we'll put the pickup tube back in. Which actually looks okay, believe it or not. I don't think this these golf carts are pretty darn resilient. They gotta sit for a long time in order for them to be really bad. And that club car that I keep referencing was really bad, but came back to life. So it's like, like these things are tougher than lawnmowers when, when it comes to sitting. A little bit less moving parts too. When it comes to belts, a little bit more weather protected too. Probably shouldn't be doing that with an impact, but. So now, what needs to happen is we need to get the fuel line on here. Uh, which I probably should have done before I bolted this in, but that's okay. We'll get it in one way or another. My goodness. That wants to battle me. This side goes on the that side of the fuel pump. And then we've got this one goes on the other side of the fuel pump. like so we'll loop it around and it'll pop into the carb so that's the fuel line set up I'll get that set up then we'll get the carburetor back on well we can kind of do that now actually just need to slide it back on boom and then it's just a matter of connecting linkages up I'll show you the linkage setup give this thing a little bit of a prime Hook it on the jump box or the little jump pack. See if we can get it to continuously run. And then if that's the case, then hopefully we'll just be able we'll just have to put in a battery and call it a day. Well, I was almost a dummy and forgot the top jet with the carb here. Looks like it may have a little bit of gumminess. So I'm gonna put a wire in it, get that freed up, put it back on. Uh, put a couple of nuts on here. Oh uh, no, it looks like I gotta put the air box back on. Try this. Really close. Put some gas in it. Air box. Got the fuel lines in. About to throw the choke and the throttle mechanism back on here. And I think we're basically done after that. Hopefully. Oil's clean. Full. Can't really ask for more than that. So that's gonna be fixed here in just a second. Or that that doesn't really necessarily need to be changed. I cleaned out all the leaves, leaves and debris out of the engine. So he he does the cleaning of these things. Uh, he spends hours on them, cleaning them up, getting them ready for sale. So. I'll get the top jet situated next time you see me. We'll be seeing if we can get this thing to run for us. All right, I got the jump box hooked up. I'm gonna spray a little bit of carb spray down in here. Hopefully, I can get enough of a return. There we go. See if it, all right, we got it in neutral. Shouldn't go anywhere. Sounds 
like it wants to. We'll try it one more time. Hmm. Might have a stuck valve. Might have a stuck valve. Let's try this one more time. Yeah. I think she's got a stuck valve too. As you can see, it's I'll tell you why. Do you see how that junk shooting up? The intake there, like it was shooting up. That means that the one of the valves isn't seating, most likely. So that's. Uh, it's not the easiest to get to, but we should be able to get to it okay. Might take the air box back off just to get better access. But I think I think we just, like I said, have a stuck valve just from where it's been sitting. As long as we can get that sorted out, I think we'll have a runner here. So, it's not going to be as easy as just a carb clean here, unfortunately. I looked at the valves. The valves are in spec. They're at like five six thousandths and they're supposed to be at four those two thousandths aren't going to make a difference if it's anything it'd be too tight that would cause issues and i'm getting the poof poof through the intake so what that most likely means is that i'm going in this bad boy and putting a head gasket on it so i don't think that's too bad the only thing is you just got a bunch of covers and stuff you got to get off here I think I got to get the exhaust off and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't want to have to go this deep into this thing, but we're going to have to, aren't we? So, now it's just a matter of getting everything out. Like all the covers and mess off. And y'all know from the club car when the covers and stuff were fun on that one. So, I've got to figure out, oh, the exhaust is right here, so... At least the exhaust is accessible right here. Uh, this one's going to take a little bit. I'll double check my work tomorrow, but I'm almost positive because these valves are adjusted correctly. From what I can tell. And I can hear the... I can hear the hissing coming from right here too when I turn it. Which tells me that something's going on with that gasket. That's a big bummer because I thought that we were going to have a winner here with just some fuel stuff. I was hoping to have this out at night, but obviously not. So I'm going to clean up for the night. Probably order me a uh, head gasket and wait on it. And we'll be back. Working on this head gasket when the head gasket comes in. In the process of removing the head, there is this little shroud or rubber, uh, I guess, heat protector or something along those lines is what this is that you have to take off. It's just a couple of those little automotive type clips that pop out, almost like for trim panels. And you just you just get it out from under here. And then that what that does is it, it exposes the exhaust canister, which is this massive thing right here. We've got to get that taken off of the cylinder head. We got to get this and the intake taken off. And I've got the overhead valve cover actually already off. I just need to take that back off again. Your spark plug hole, we can take that off. It almost looks like they tried to put a or. There's a spark plug in there. 
Now it looks like they tried to replace the spark plug to fix the issue, and that was not the case. 12 millimeters will get you these, it looks like these elongated heads, or these elongated bolts that go into the head for this. So I'm going to take that off, and then we have to figure out this whole situation with the covers. Um, I'm going to see... We know, I know I at least need to take this cover off. I have to take the valve cover back off, so I might go ahead and do that while we're under here. Because what that's going to have us do is get us... I checked the valves like I said, so if you've got a head leak through one of the valves in the overhead uh, overhead valve setup, or we've got a head gasket leak, and I've got a head gasket. So get the spark plug out, these two 12 millimeters, and then I'll rejoin you as we get these little plastic covers off here, hopefully so that we can get the head off. We might get lucky here. It might be easier than I think. The, I remember the club car was a little difficult. This plastic piece all it did was actually pop off and boom look at that so that's good the valve cover gasket I think I got one of them for this so that's not that big of a deal this exhaust actually just bent back just a little bit seemed like it worked fine to get off Ton of dirt and junk down through here too. And so now we are basically are we at the point we can take this off? Maybe. Can I get the carb off without having to take anything else off? Yes I can. That's good. They got that carb plate there. We don't have to worry about that. Hopefully I'm not taking too much room up here. Well, we got one, two, three, four. Is it only four head bolts? Or have we got a couple on the bottom down here? It may only be four head bolts. They look like they're 13 millimeters. Maybe bigger than that. They're 14 millimeters. I'm going to get these head bolts off and then hopefully we'll just be able to pull this head off and uh, see exactly what's going on here uh, and show us why I've, I'm getting blowback through the carb. So yeah, it was only those four bolts and it looks like uh, this is going to come right on out. So and we'll hopefully see what's going on here. Let's see. The push rods and all just coming right out with me, huh? So, what have we got going on here? Oop. Bunch of just stuff here. Uh, Almost looks like something got lodged in here or something along those lines. Let's see, gasket-wise, if we see any, like, leakage or anything. Oh, these are, like, guides. I need to find that guide that fell out. It almost looks like something was trying to happen right there. Almost like it was seeping out a little bit right here. But in terms of gas exhaust, like O-rings and stuff, I don't see any like, and I don't feel it doesn't feel like anything's loose right there. So that's a good sign. I do need to locate that last or locate these guides that fell out. And let's take a look at. the gasket while we're here. 
Do we have any sort of leakage points or anything? I don't know. It kind of looks like it was trying to seep out the top. But nothing that really indicates the intake valve having issues. I took the tank out and cleaned it, so I don't think it was a water-related issue. So, what I'll do is I'll just clean everything up here. The engine, let's turn the engine a little bit. Cylinder wall is nice and solid, so it's not that. either. The push rods are in their spots. Everything was wor working like it was supposed to. It was just, like I said, pushing air back through the intake and causing like a low compression issue. So that's, that's where most of my problems were stemming from. I need to find that little guide that fell down through here and then we'll just get the gaskets out, clean everything up, put it back together, see what's going on. Hopefully it'll run better after that. So now we're going to put everything back on. I have the new head gasket here. I went ahead and put the uh, set, what are those, those devices, those guides back in. Uh, looks like one of them is not in all the way, but it might be. We'll see how this situates itself once I get the head on here. Took the valve, uh, the, the push rods off. And we'll just adjust the valves as necessary when we get this back on. So it's going to go on like so. Got to get this carb out of the way here. But it'll pop on the guides. And we got it on just like that. So, like I said, I think those guides on the, one of those guides on the bottom is is going to be pushed in whenever we torque these back down. Which it's I saw conflicting things online. I think these are supposed to go to about 30 foot pounds, which is quite a bit in my opinion. But it does have that metal gasket on it, so. You do have that. Um, you want to go on a crisscross pattern. I think you might want to do like 18 first with all four of them and then go down to 30 so that you don't warp anything. That's what I'm going to do at least. So that's that's all I'm going to do here is put these four bolts back on. Um, go ahead. I've got the whole gasket set here. And we'll go ahead and put the exhaust gasket and stuff on the exhaust gasket right here don't forget your intake um, coupler as well a spacer and got a valve cover gasket new exhaust gasket here too which you can go ahead and put on I'm not going to bolt the exhaust down yet but i am going to tighten these up and uh we'll torque them to 18 foot pounds first and then we'll torque them to 30 after that check to make sure everything is seated like it's supposed to be looks like it so 
we'll get working on torquing it and, uh, next. So I've done the first round at 15. Now I'm going to go to 30. In terms of the valves down here, I actually was able to push the valve spring in and slide each push rod back into place. So that, that helped. We'll double check the valve clearances and everything. But we're going to 30 foot pounds now. So that's 30. And I'm going to crisscross pattern. Again, you don't want to overdo any of this, so you got to be careful. Okay. Okay, we'll double check. And then I might just spin it over by hand. When I did it earlier, I didn't seem it didn't seem like I felt any. back pressure or anything. That seems really strong now, which is good. Hopefully that's the case. Now what we'll do is we can put all of our accessories and stuff back on now. So our bolts for the I'm still skeptical though because I didn't really see any obvious head gasket damage. If somebody, um, if somebody saw it on the video, please reach out because y'all know I ain't, I ain't perfect by any means. I never claim to be perfect. I just try and show you how I fix things, whether they're right or wrong, and uh, that might be one of the things that slipped through the cracks on me this time. So just putting the exhaust bolts back on here. Again, you don't want to go but so tight. Last thing you want to do is break off a stud. So there we go. Maybe one more here. That's good enough. So now just some cleanup work. Y'all saw everything that I did to take it off. We got the little spacer to put back on the carb here. And then we'll put the carb back on. Put the spark plug back in. And then slide that plastic cover back on. Before we adjust the valves and put on the valve cover gasket. And the valve cover. So I'll rejoin y'all when I see if I can get this thing back going again. If this helped any issues with what we were having. And one thing that I did not mention, I don't think I showed either. I cleaned off all the head, all the head, and none, of, neither of the valves were having any issues seating. So the valves were seated; they were not spinning or anything like that on uh, uh, above the valve seat. So I do know that, that I don't have any issues associated with valve springs or seating valves, which also makes me think that I have a, that I had a head gasket issue. But like I said. Truth be found out here in just a second. Y'all, sometimes I wish I had the camera rolling, but in this case, I didn't. When I put it back together, it was doing the same thing. But then I heard some sort of push, hiss, or something along those lines, and... It is a little bit. Probably run better when I get the air filter on. So, guys, I don't know exactly what it was. I don't know if there was something lodged in the head that just found itself out. If cleaning the head ended up fixing it. Or if there was something further deeper in the engine that finally just dislodged itself. But whatever happened, I think... 
the head gasket, the valve cover gasket, and just getting everything clean had a positive effect on it. But I can't tell you if exactly if that's what allowed it to get fixed. Either way, I am relieved, and y'all saw how to replace a head gasket on one of these things. So let me uh, put everything back together. We'll make sure it runs and drives and all that good, st or drives up and down the uh, road and stuff. I do need to put a valve stem in this tire, but all the others I think are okay. And we just got to give it a whirl, let this thing go back to its owner, hopefully, and so that he can sell it off. Uh, really weird. Really weird. I thought a head gasket was going to do it. And a head cleaning. And I guess it was something stuck somewhere else. One other thing I did, I noticed that the intake valve was a little tight. And I loosened it up. But like I said, it was still doing the same thing. Something just cleared out of the engine. You don't know whenever it runs for a long time what it could be. But whatever it did, it cleared it out and it's running good now. That's all we needed. So, so I put it all back together and everything seems good. Um, we can put it in drive. And, I mean, it's just... These Yamahas are pretty bad about needing some choke whenever you first pull off sometimes. This one's really quiet, but it's really fast too. I like it because it's not lifted. I'm not a lifted golf cart person. I like the ones you can go low, not low and slow, but you know, without having to have all those lifted stuff. They just drive and ride so much better. But everything, like, seems to be riding good. The valve stem fixed the issue on the uh, left front. I don't hear it leaking leaking air anymore. So, and you see it picks up just fine. Get a little bit of deep, get some decent speed going here. So, we'll take it for a lap around again. Like I said, I don't know if the head gasket fixed it or uh, getting in the head did anything, but whatever it did, it set itself right and uh, started working properly again. So that's all we can ask for. I'll take, a, I'll take it for a lap, let the uh, customer know it's ready so that he can uh, flip it on his end. I get my money, he gets his money, everybody's happy. So that's everything on this Yamaha. It turned out to be pretty good, I think, and uh, like I said, these ones that aren't lifted and governed out and all that stuff seem to just run, run, run. So, I uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Like I said, I don't know if the head gasket actually fixed it, but whatever I did, getting in the head, cleaning it out, putting the gasket on, isn't, you know, it all work done for nothing. It, it you know, with things... Uh, over 20 years old now, so we can always use a little bit of freshening up. But either way, we did it, and it uh, either fixed itself or something I did helped get some stuff dislodged or something along those lines. Because whenever it passed, whatever it passed, it started running good and it's run great. So can't really ask for more than that. But thank y'all again for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video as I uh, figured out how to do this and hopefully y'all got something out of it. This Yamaha is one of the easier ones. The club cars seemed like they were a little bit more difficult to do the same thing that I did a, pre a few videos back. So um, learning what, uh, what brand golf carts I like working on, and they seem to be uh, the front runner so far. But we'll see. Thank y'all again, and I'll catch y'all in the next repair. See you then.